This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, how there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter. I'm going to welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, September 27th, 1988. A man who was the subject of a weird family guy joke many years ago has happened. Obviously, you know who it is by the picture, but I'm going to give you the context. In the episode that Lois becomes a kleptomaniac on Family Guy, Peter decides to be a, have a job as a sumo wrestler. And the guy says, what makes you think you're a sumo wrestler? And Peter says, I have great natural ability, like Greg Luganis. And then Peter, and then the cutaway to Peter says, hi, I'm Peter Griffin. You may be wondering which way we're going with the Greg Luganis joke. Is he going to make a diving head, diving board head injury? Is an AIDS joke, a gay joke, or the fact that his last name sounds like anus. Well, we will take the high road and we'll do a joke about him being naturally hairless. Brian? And Brian comes in with his hair shared up and says, Hi, I'm Greg Luganis. I'm naturally hairless. Terrific. But, of course, the moment we're talking about is 1980 Olympics. That's when he had the famous head board, diving board injury, and that's the focus of our, on this day. So anyway, Greg Luganis was, a, was an Olympic diver and LGBTQ activist and an author who won gold medals at the 84 and 88 Summer Olympics, both at Springboard and Platform. Now, a lot of people don't know what, well, a lot about dive, diving, but diving is like you, to do like all those flips before you hit the water and all that, and you have to land cleanly. Well, that's true. Also, a lot of people don't know what the difference between platform and springboard is. Platform driving is easy. You just, you you run to the board and then you run off, of, and then you jump off a platform. It's a solid, it's a solid area. The springboard is go boing, boing, boing. That's where the game is gonna hurt. So anyway, um, the funny thing is that Luganis actually was adopted. His, his adoptive parents are Francis and Peter Luganis of Greek descent. Luganis was of Samoan and Swedish descent, and he did connect to his biological father and mother. So anyway, he liked diving and all that. Nagatis actually took part in the 1976 Summer Olympics under the direction of Dr. Sammy Lee, who was a, who was a two-time Olympic champion before him. He would play second in, ta in the tower behind the Blasi of the Blasi of Italy. So he was the tower. I don't know what the tower event is like, but anyway. Nogainis looked good to win gold at the 80 Olympics, but of course, as we all know, that freaking boycott. He did get a congressional gold medal for those athletes who did who got ruined from being in the Olympics. Nogainis would win two titles at the World Championships. So anyway, at the 84 Olympics. He crushed his opponents easily in the springboard and tower diving events. Tower, I think, mean platform. In 1988, though, it would happen. On the springboard during the preliminary rounds, he struck his head, he bounced, and then when he went backwards, unfortunately his head bounced off the springboard, giving him a concussion. He did complete the preliminaries and got lucky. He earned... He actually repeated his difficult dive. In the 10-meter finals, he had a 3.4 difficulty dive. Oh, no. At, yeah, that was in the that was in the tower, but surpassing the silver medalist by one point. But yeah, even though he had that concussion, he still won the springboard event by 25 points. Luganis had a great time. He didn't get a lot of Endorsement deals following his Olympic victories. 
But his major deal was with Speedo. Anyway, yeah. So, of course, the problem is he didn't get a lot of endorsements because of some kind of thing to do with homosexuals because he was rumored to be gay even before he came out of the closet. Of course, Lou Guinness was actually diagnosed with HIV six months before the Olympics and started antivirals. No, antiretrovirals. And of course, Lou Guinness came out publicly as being HIV positive in 95. People in the diving community said that he why did he not disclose his HIV status at the time of his head injury in the 88 Olympics, given that he bled into a pool that others dove into? Lugana said he was paralyzed with fear that he would infect another competitor or the doctor who treated him, but thankfully no one else was infected. The incident posed no risk to others as any blood that was full was any blood was actually fully diluted by the pool water, and chlorine does kill HIV in a sense. Since scare is an effective barrier to HIV, the only way the virus could enter would be through an open wound. If the virus just touches the skin, it doesn't cause infection. The skin has no receptors to bind HIV, explained the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases man, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Of course, you know Dr. Fauci's rules in the COVID thing. Anyway, so yeah him coming out of the closet. It was huge. He actually was a mentor to the diamond team in the 2012 and 2016 Olympics. He was a feeder major in college. Um, he really wasn't in many good things. Luganus was part of a Hollywood Squares week in 2000 about famous Olympic gold medals. That's amazing. So anyway, he would have some books. He even wrote one. For the life of your dog, a complete guide to having a dog through adoption and birth, from adoption and birth to sickness and health. Wow, weird. He would actually compete in dog agility competitions. I remember the Guinness is a gay rights activist and an HIV awareness advocate trying to defend civil liberties in the LGBT community and people diagnosed with HIV AIDS. He didn't like the don't ask, don't tell policy about the fact that gay men and women have been serving this country for years. It's encouraging people who are serving our country to lie to each other. Luganus was actually in a romantic relationship with his manager, Jim Babbitt. And that Babbitt actually raped him at knife point and took a lot of his money. Luganus was diagnosed with HIV. He actually contracted the disease from Babbitt. His doctor put him on a drug that he had to take four hours around the clock. Luganus actually had a restraining order against Babbitt. And Babbitt died of AIDS in 1990. Luganus actually was in failing health and thought that AIDS was going to get him. All that. that was in 1993, but he's still alive 28 years later. Luganus publicly came out as gay earlier than the 94 gay games. And he did announce he was HIV positive. Luganus was engaged to a paralegal, Johnny Chaliot, and were married in 2013. But just this past June, they said that the parent has mutually agreed all that.
in popular culture, he was part of the documentaries about the 84 and 88 Summer Olympics. In the games, his memoir, Breaking the Surface, was a USA Never TV movie with Mario Lopez playing the lead. Nice. Um, he was part of a 30 for 30 short about the 1988 thing. Azerbaijan actually gave him some stamps. It was in the like this. So yeah. So I'll go see. Oh yeah, that's right. He was in D2 because he was part of a Hollywood get-together during the thing in San Antonio. I mean in Los Angeles. He was in 30 for 30, in the Tim Richmond 30 for 30 thing about, you know, Tim Richmond engaging HIV positive and all that. So yeah, good for him that he has had the guts to come back from everything. Anyway, I'm just down to do.